Meat Boy is definitely back because today we are making a slow cooked beef shank. Surprisingly easy and simple, yet it will turn out delicious and makes a great holiday centerpiece. Bit more affordable compared to prime rib, the big roast and all that stuff. Kind of like a middle of the line thing. Uh, these are the 100% grass fed beef shanks that we have available on Frankie's free range meat. And let's take a look at the other ingredients. Along with our beef shank from Frankie's free range meat, we also have our collagen broth as the base for our braise. If you don't have these, you could just use a beef stock or make your own, something that's very concentrated, full of flavor. And we also have some of the salt to season that you guys can also get on frankiesrangemeat.com. The flavoring components, the vegetables that we're using here are mushroom, onion, garlic, and thyme. Very, very traditional to go with meat. Delicious combination of flavors. I really like these. Of course, we have our wine. I'm gonna use a combination of red and white wine. You could use either or, it doesn't really matter since I have a small amount left of each one. We're just gonna combine them. And what's optional is using flour on the outside of the shank before you sear it. You don't have to. Some recipes have it, some recipes not. It's gonna be a little more caramelized and add a little bit of thickness to the end product. And after we prep everything, we're just gonna throw it in the pressure cooker. If you have a Dutch oven, that's even better, but uh, I do not. So let's get started with seasoning and searing off the beef shank. Okay, so we're just gonna mix a little bit of salt with some flour. So we're just gonna unwrap our shank, take the meat diaper that's absorbing some of the moisture away, as well as some of the paper that's used to prevent the bone from breaking the plastic seal on the meat. So these are really, really nice guys, beautiful. The butchers did a, a great job with this shank. It's nicely trimmed and you have the delicious grass fed marrow that's gonna be in the top here as well. We're just gonna kind of pat it a bit dry even though there's not much moisture, we wanna get as good of a sear as possible. Over here to the side, I just have my pan on a medium high heat with a bit of oil in it as we do this. Now, without making too much of a mess, we just wanna lightly coat the outside in the flour and salt mixture. A little bit on the bottom too. So pan is getting hot. I'm just gonna put our beef shank in here. You don't really wanna do this on the grill or on the fire because that wood flavor is gonna take over the stew, but if you don't mind that, you can still do it. So just keep an eye on this, you know, make sure it's not burning. When you have the, the flour on the outside like this, it's a lot easier to get some nice color on this. We're just gonna turn the heat down a little bit. And while this is searing, we're gonna prep our vegetables. So here we have some organic shiitake mushrooms and organic white onions. These are my two favorite, minimally inflammatory, very nutritious, and also goes very well with the meat. So since everything's going in the slow cooker, I'm not gonna go crazy with how I cut these vegetables. I'm just gonna chop them up a little small. So after about five minutes of searing on different sides. Our beef shank is nice and brown and caramelized. We're going to put it in our Instant Pot. Does it actually not fit in the Instant Pot? Oh my God, no. All right, we'll see. We'll see if it fits. All right, so I just checked. The beef shank will just about barely fit in the Instant Pot, so we're good to go. So we have all of that caramelized beef flavor in the pan, which we're gonna add the mushrooms to. Now, ideally, as we said earlier, you have a Dutch oven and you're just gonna do everything on the Dutch oven. So we got all the mushroom and onion in the pan here. All you wanna do is get some browning and caramelization on the outside of the vegetables because they will be cooked through very well in the, the Instant Pot. Good thing I don't have a smoke alarm in here, but guys, I think I'm gonna get lung cancer if I cook this dish any longer. So. We got the nice color on the onions and the mushrooms. We're just gonna put the garlic in here for a minute or two and get some color on the garlic as well. The onions and mushrooms, sometimes they got a lot of moisture in them. So you gotta use a really high heat to, uh, to get some color on them. We're gonna deglaze the pan with our wine. 
half a bottle total maybe. Now to this, we're just gonna add our thyme. We're gonna add maybe a tablespoon of salt to season everything. You guys better like, go to Frankie Strange Me, buy my shit. I'm dying in here, bro. My neighbor's gonna call the fire department. All right, guys, about five minutes. We cooked off half the alcohol. Well, most of the work is basically done. We're gonna put it in the Instant Pot. And now we're gonna add the three jars of collagen broth. We'll also add a bit of water. Maybe two cups of water. I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit, make sure the broth is incorporated into the wine, all the vegetables are distributed. All right, so we got our Instant Pot all set up here. Looks like it's closing just fine. We're gonna put this on meat, high pressure, 45 minutes, should be good. So even though the Instant Pot says 45 minutes, it's gonna take at least an hour, and then you wanna let it dissipate pressure naturally, which is gonna take another two or three hours. So, you know, you can make some potatoes, some rice, whatever type of starch you wanna serve this over, get your side dishes ready, maybe some really nice mashed potatoes. And uh, this is even better like the next day because those flavors are gonna really meld together, but we'll talk about that more when it's done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moment of truth. Looks about as expected. Some of the marrow actually fell out of the top there. It's like all the way hollow on the inside. And I actually just, I just moved the bone around a little bit and it, uh, <laughs> the meat completely fell off. Now you got a couple options here. This can be served right now as is. It's still hot, so you know you take the meat out, put the bone in the center, put everything else on the side in like a nice serving dish. If you have the Dutch oven, you don't have to do that. Dutch oven will already be good to serve. In my case, I'm going to take the bone out, set it aside for the presentation. Then I'm gonna let this cool off overnight, probably scrape the fat off the top, and then we'll reheat it when we're ready to eat. And so after this cooled off overnight, you can see there is a lot of fat in this and most people aren't gonna like it, but if you really wanna serve it as is when it's finished cooking, you could. It's just gonna be really greasy and you know your rice or potatoes is gonna soak up a lot of that. So uh, by removing this fat, it's just gonna have a lot cleaner of a flavor. So we got all the fat out. The shank was resting overnight, developed a lot of those delicious flavors even more. So when we're ready to serve this, it's gonna take an hour or two. I'm gonna put this back in the Instant Pot. We're gonna put the lid back on, put it on keep warm, and then let this go for about two hours, make sure everything else is ready. All right, so we have our beef shank all warmed up after an hour in the Instant Pot. We have our serving platter with our bone ready. I mean, guys, this is all I got, so <laughs> this is what we're using. So we're just placing the meat around the bone as it was. And yeah, this might fall apart a little bit, but you can try to keep it together. If not, I guess you could just like shred the whole thing and mix it in with the soup. We're just gonna put everything in here. And I'm just taking out the uh, thyme sprigs as I go. So now I'm just gonna place all the mushrooms and the onions in the broth at the bottom here. And if you want, you know, put some onions and mushrooms on top of the uh, on top of the meat. Show everyone what's inside. And that's really it, guys. Pretty simple. Hopefully, you could see with the lighting in here. So you know, you'd have this on the counter wherever you're serving from. People come up with their plate, and they can take a little bit of everything. So I got a nice plate of rice here. Come in, put plenty of the broth on top with the mushrooms and the onions. And then, you know, you don't really need a fork or a knife. We just break off some of that beef shank, dip it in the broth, put it on top. I mean, one of these shanks, guys, I think four, five, six people at least, you know, not everyone is on the uh, carnivore diet. So that's going to be plenty of meat for everyone to take a few nice big pieces. And this is really nice because for, you know, way under $100, you get something that's Pretty impressive, cool looking, and people haven't really seen it before. Finally sitting down to try this. Just the broth and the rice brings really nice flavor. 
the beef shank itself, very nice. It's not like fall apart tender like it's mush, but it's super tender and it's at this perfect point where it's just about to fall apart. Yeah, if you want to reduce that broth on the stove top, it can make a really nice thick gravy, but if that sits in the, uh, in the fridge for a little bit, it'll probably uh, turn into like collagen. So it's plenty thick as is. Now what's really surprising about this to me is how light and delicate it actually is. Because you would think like a beef shank is gonna be this super fatty, rich, you know, fall asleep dish. But since we're using grass fed beef, we didn't add a crazy amount of salt in it and we took the fat out of the broth it's actually really, really light and enjoyable. I like this a lot. Maybe if you want to uh, finish it with a little bit of butter, maybe add some red wine vinegar or something at the end there, that'd be really delicious too. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this recipe and are cooking some delicious food for your family during the holidays. You can go to frank com if you want to check out Frankie's Free Range Meat as well as Frankie's Free Range Foods where we have various products that we use in this video. But outside of that, guys, please drop a like. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again for joining, guys. And I'll see you for the next video. So after you're all done, you just take the bone out. Then you can kind of shred the beef up, mix everything together. And it's perfect for leftovers when you want to take a portion out with some gravy and veg.